Does it matter? Well, I want you to see something to the left that we now talk about in special clinics like mine, staging heart disease. Uh Uh-oh, that's cancer talk. Yes, we're staging heart disease. And my notes in my clinic will always indicate if a patient's had an artificial intelligence coronary CT angiogram. Are they stage zero? Very few people, but some are. Stage one, stage two, or stage three. And published last year was a study proving it makes a difference because this is a new paradigm, so you got to prove it. And the people that are stage zero over 10 years had a very, very low risk of events compared to the blue line that's going down and down and down over 10 years that had almost a 50% risk of having a event in the next 10 years. So of course, then we need to intervene. We're staging and we're not treating people the same. The people with the line that's flat on the top are getting treated less aggressively. And the people with the blue line going down and down and down, uh, we're attacking them with a war, everything we can do. So um, there's even now therapy. This is a paradigm shift. This is Dr. Andrew Freeman. It's kind of funny. I was just reading in a magazine you may get called Health Science, an interview with Dr. Andrew Freeman, cardiologist in Denver. But he has proposed with a group of colleagues that if you have stage zero, uh, we might want to recheck you in about four years. That's the top yellow uh, or beige line. And you have no narrowing. And we're probably going to mainly emphasize lifestyle. Stage one, you've got disease. And you might get away with some low dose medications and lifestyle and being rechecked in three years. Stage two, we're going to throw more at you, including aspirin and blood thinners, and we're going to recheck in about two years. And if you're stage three, as many of my patients are, we're throwing the kitchen sink at you. This is war on cancer, but it's heart disease. And we're going to use every pharmacology lifestyle tool in my office, supplement tools, uh, exercise tools, stress management tools. So this is a whole new game, a whole new paradigm. You've never seen this before. There's lots of research using these artificial intelligence coronary CT angiograms. They've studied statins, and you may not be a believer in statins, but I'm telling you the data, statins cause regression. That means they make the plaque smaller. Estrogen's been studied, it's neutral. Uh, Xarelto, a blood thinner, works better than warfarin. It slows progression if you need it. Fish oil slows progression, hopefully, also true of the vegan versions, algae oil, but fish oil is what's been studied. Interesting, testosterone's been studied as a gel in one study, and it caused progression. It was judged to be harmful, um, and that needs to be reproduced. And then the last two, a torvastatin is another statin. It causes regression, shrinking of the soft plaque, that um, yellow plaque. And finally, An old drug is now being used widely in heart patients. Colchicine is a medication used for gout. And in a recent study, it also can cause soft plaque to shrink. And we're using it more and more in heart patients. Part of our war on heart disease. It's diet, it's exercise, it's sleep, it's fitness, it's supplements. It can be cholesterol-lowering drugs, blood pressure-lowering drugs, blood-thinning drugs. But now it extends to an old gout drug that's being reused for heart disease. This is a fascinating study published in 2016. Uh, A lot of my peers in this country don't use supplements. I do. And I want you to uh, ignore a recent video that was on nutritionfacts.org, sorry to say, that said that aged garlic tablets weren't of use and you might as well just use garlic powder. I disagree with that video completely. This is the published science, and it's not the only published science, but if you look in the middle where it says low attenuation plaque, that's a dangerous, dangerous plaque in heart arteries. After a year of taking tablets that are aged odorless garlic, um, the low attenuation plaque starts to melt away. And if you're in the yellow, the placebo, It doesn't go away. The pink is the people that were treated. This is called a double-blind, randomized, controlled study. This is real science. And I don't care if my patients use garlic powder, but I definitely want them, if they have soft plaque, 
to add in aged odorless garlic tablets, usually about 2000 milligrams a day. And they may do that with all the other things we've talked about. So supplements do have a role scientifically shown. Now, the interesting thing with this new paradigm, artificial intelligence, coronary CT angiogram, you have to have an IV, you get iodine dye, so you can't be allergic to iodine dye, and you have to have good kidneys, is that we can do this a year or two later. And this is a woman that refused to go on therapy. And when we looked at her arteries that were followed up a few years after the baseline, her plaque got worse because there was no therapy. And that therapy includes diet and fitness and weight control and blood pressure control and blood sugar control, blood cholesterol control and inflammation control. So we can document, that's a new paradigm because now we can measure accurately using AICT. Here's a 56 year old man that was put on a high dose statin and hopefully died in exercise. Three years later, his plaque basically didn't change. So we stabilized things. And this is an example of somebody taking really intense cholesterol-lowering therapy, an uh, in injectable version called Repath and Proluent. And over the course of a follow-up study, just uh, one and a half years after the first one, there was a significant shrinking. And what you do is you shrink the soft plaque, the non-calcified plaque. You don't shrink the calcified plaque. We don't know how to get the calcium out of the arteries. We don't see calcium scores going down. We don't even know if we want calcium scores to go down, but we want soft plaque, the um, yellow plaque, the uh, abnormal juvenile plaque. So just read with me the bullet points. Coronary CT angiography, artificial intelligence can be used as a non-invasive imaging modality. I wouldn't necessarily say low cost. It's about a $1,500 study, but I would say low risk unless you're iodine allergic or have poor kidneys. The AI CT study may allow more wide use to assess drug efficacy on atherosclerosis progression in primary and secondary prevention populations. That's you, everybody. And finally, precision tracking will allow individual assessments. That's what's really neat now is seeing people back after a year or two of intense imaging. And if you want to know the answer to a question, nobody's done a study using this technology with the Dr. Ornish diet, the Dr. Furman diet, the Dr. Esselstyn diet. Nobody's done that study yet. It costs a lot of money to do formal clinical trials. So most of the trials so far have been done with drugs. I showed you the one done with aged garlic. Uh, there's uh, more and more being done with um, a, a new study being launched called the Paradigm Study that will be throwing the kitchen sink at high-risk heart patients, and then they'll get a follow-up CT angiogram. Now, I've ordered hundreds and hundreds of these studies, and I started doing that three and a half years ago. So I've had a number of people get their second study. They want to do it. They have to pay for it. Usually it's not insurance covered, as I said, about $1,500. Not everybody wants to do it. I rarely order this on people with a calcium score of zero. But when you do, you do see quite a bit of soft plaque. So even a calcium score of zero misses. And I am a person with a calcium score zero, but I had one of these AI studies and I had a pinpoint little spot of soft plaque, no big deal, but it was there. So now we could answer interesting studies, put people with heart disease on the Ornish diet, put people with heart disease on a ketogenic or carnivore diet and check them again in a year. I don't know who's gonna fund that, but that would be a fun study. How about doing the Esselstyn diet with extra virgin olive oil and without extra virgin olive oil, fund that study. Uh, that would be a fun one. Chelation therapy, people ask about intravenous chemicals. Probably not going to be done because a study published in the last two to three weeks showed it once again failed to show benefit. How about dairy, good or bad on heart arteries? That'd be a fun one. How about fish, good or bad on heart arteries? How about the very popular Prolon fasting mimicking diet I use in my clinic? We don't know what that does to heart arteries. We know it does to waste. We know what it does to waistline and blood tests, and soon to be published uh, a concept called autophagy. But that would be a fun one too. Maybe we are shrinking soft plaque. Maybe we're not. We now can study it. Okay, let's move along here. Our war on heart disease, kicking it in the butt like cancer. 
And I already mentioned that uh, advanced labs are part of the war on heart disease, part of the aggressive paradigm shift. Because in many studies, this is just one, people who are hospitalized with, for example, heart attacks, very often have relatively unremarkable LDL cholesterols. And even some, if you look, have LDL cholesterols of 50 because LDL cholesterol is one of easily measured 15 to 20 different lab tests for a heart patient. So you might have a normal LDL cholesterol and have 14 other lab tests that are abnormal. This is a picture from a um, pharmaceutical journal a number of years ago. That's supposed to be an artery with a plaque. It looks like yellow butter because this person probably ate too much butter. But those daggers are things that can be measured in the blood that can cause plaque. And I'll tell you, since this was published 12 years ago, there's about eight more new daggers that weren't on here, like TMAO and lipoprotein little a. But it's just to point out, you might wanna measure all these blood levels, all these daggers, your omega-3 level, your C-reactive protein level, your insulin level, your nitric oxide level measured as something called ADMA and others. And we know for sure, that cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, is not the only factor, that inflammation is a big factor. There are, uh, on this slide, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tests for inflammation, uh, of which I do all these in my clinic. They're urine or blood, they're available, and they help sort out, um, they stage a person. A person with an abnormal calcium score and all these seven tests are normal, is much lower risk than a person who has an elevated calcium score and all these seven tests are abnormal and they're available. I mentioned colchicine, a new kid on the block in heart disease. This is a famous study published about four years ago. This was a big study, 5,000 patients with what are called chronic coronary disease that either got colchicine or they got a placebo, men and women, double blind, randomized. And if you look to the right in the middle, the placebo group had a 9.6% rate of events like heart attacks or death. And the colchicine group, it dropped by about a third. So you'd rather be on the colchicine than be on the placebo. And colchicine is now FDA approved for heart patients. It's a new drug called Lodoco, L-O-D-O-C-O. But it's also available as plain old colchicine we used to use for gout. So the action step is... Uh, go back, rewatch this, write down those tests and get tested for inflammation. One test is better than zero. Seven tests is better than one. Okay. Number seven, as we stage a war on heart disease is lipoprotein uh, little a. And unfortunately, my PowerPoint doesn't let me put a lowercase a on the title slide. But if you look at the book I wrote on this topic a couple of years ago, with delicious recipes included, you can see that it's lipoprotein little a. That's actually how you pronounce it, lipoprotein little a, or LP little a, the heart's quiet killer. And this is a cholesterol molecule. As I explained to my patients, 100% of people make regular cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, but 20 to 25% get a gift from their parents and they make two cholesterols. They make regular cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, and they have now the capacity in the liver to also make lipoprotein A cholesterol. And we know that uh, this is a particularly nasty cholesterol. And a recent study said it was six times more dangerous than regular cholesterol because it can cause plaque in arteries, it can cause clotting in arteries, and it can cause inflammation in arteries. It actually looks a lot like an LDL cholesterol molecule, but it has a bridge and it has this special uh, tail on it called Kringles, uh, which is named after a Danish pastry. Another thing you probably don't want, you don't want lipoprotein little a, and you probably don't want the Danish pastry. I've never had one, but um, you know, I, my clinic is full of people that are suffering from silent but important heart disease and we identify this as elevated in the blood. It's a very simple blood test. Everybody should have this blood test. And if you use a cutoff of what a normal and abnormal level is, 
it's estimated that about a billion and a half people in the world are walking around with high levels of lipoprotein, little a. At this point, there is no drug approved by our FDA for lipoprotein, little a. Lipitor, nope. Crestor, nope. Provacol, nope. Uh, Zetia, nope. None of them are. But the pharmaceutical industry is working on about five different approaches. And within the next few years, we will have drugs. They'll be expensive. They'll start out with injectable drugs. Later on, there'll be oral drugs. And we will have better solutions. This is a genetic problem. It doesn't respond well to diet and exercise. Uh, but it's very important. It's estimated that one out of 14 heart attacks is due to lipoprotein, little a cholesterol. And one out of seven cases of clogged aortic valves leading to aortic valve surgery and aortic valve replacement is due to lipoprotein A cholesterol. One out of every four or five, it depends what population uh, selected. So if you know we have a, a large number of people watching this presentation live and more people will watch it recorded. And I can tell you one out of every four has lipoprotein little a, and you gotta go to your primary care doctor or order the labs on your own and get it checked once. That's not just my recommendation, that's a recommendation of the European Society of Cardiology. And just recently in the United States, it's a recommendation of something called the NLA, the National Lipid Association Cholesterol Experts. Everybody should know as early in life as possible, because you're gonna have this in your blood if you inherited it from about age one forward, it's gonna be in your bloodstream. Uh, you want to know if it's elevated. So maybe by age 20, everybody should know ideally. And the people with high levels might want to eat even healthier than average, might want to work out more than average, might want to know their blood pressure, their blood sugar more than average. And when we get treatment, they may want to consider that. 